Okay, next uh, topic here on the heart will be about the heart valves, which I was showing you guys those on Visible Body on the last video clip, and we'll talk a little bit more about their functions here in this one. I have a little issue with my keyboard <laughs> there. All right, so these heart valves, so when we were taking a look at the heart anatomy on Visible Body, which we'll return to in, in just a few moments, <clears throat> I pointed out that of course, you have these openings, your atrioventricular orifices uh, that allow blood to pass from the atria into the ventricles over on the left and the right hand sides of the heart. So those openings are covered with um, valve flaps. And then you also have openings that exist from the right ventricle up into the pulmonary trunk that is a big giant vein that is going to take blood from the right hand side of the heart to the lungs and then you've also got um, a big giant opening from the left ventricle up into the aorta that is going to take oxygenated blood um, and distribute it all throughout the body and so both of those openings are also covered with uh, valves as well so in this video lecture we'll talk a little bit more about those valves and their purposes. <clears throat> their main purpose is to make sure that blood is flowing through the heart in one direction. It's unidirectional. Obviously, it makes sense that for our pulmonary circuit, our systemic circuit to work properly, the blood's got to be flowing in one direction so it can't start flowing backwards. They open and close in response to pressure changes. And uh, we'll be talking more and more about pressure changes and how those affect heart functions as we go through the, the rest of this particular chapter. All right, the two valves that um, exist between the atria and the ventricles on each side of the heart. Again, those are, those are going to be called the atrioventricular valves or the AV valves <clears throat> because they cover that opening between the atria and the ventricles. And as we're going to see, though, you, know, you think about your heart beating boom, 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 like it's one, the whole thing's beating at once. And what really happens is the atria contract together, and then there's a little brief break, and then the ventricles contract together, and the ventricles are going to contract more forcefully. So if you didn't have these valves there, your blood would flow backwards from the ventricles back into the atria if you didn't have a way of closing that opening. So your AV valves are going to close when the ventricles contract. When the ventricles contract, you want blood to flow up into the pulmonary trunk from the right-hand side of the heart or the aorta from the left-hand side of the heart. Okay, the valve on the right-hand side of the heart is also known as our tricuspid valve or the right AV valve. And um, over on the left-hand side of the heart, the AV valve over there is called the mitral valve valve and you might have heard of somebody before having a mitral valve prolapse we'll talk a little bit more about that later um, the mitral valve is also known as the bicuspid valve the cuspid part comes from cusps that's another name for the valve flaps they're kind of triangular in shape and um, you have three of those over on the right hand side of the heart and you have two over on the left hand side of the heart so that's where they get their names and then we'll see too there are um, there are some connective tissue cords called the cordae tendinii or tendinii. And uh, those pull on those valve flaps when the ventricles contract to help close those valves. So I'm going to pause for a second. I'm going to move over to visible body and we're going to take a look at the valves over there. And so I can rotate things around and give you more of a 3D perspective on what we're looking at. All right, let's see. Here's our visible body view of the heart here, and we're going to take a look at our valves we see here. Bring out my little tablet here in case I want to draw on the screen. <clears throat> All right, so again, we're taking a look here at the right ventricle, and over here you have the left ventricle. And so we said you've got these openings right here and over here that exists between, I'm actually going to fade that so we can see the insides of your atria a little bit better. <clears throat> All right, so looking from the right atrium down into the right ventricle, you've got that opening there. And the white flaps that you see there, those are the three cusps 
of the tricuspid valve over on the right hand side of the heart and over on this side so here's the left atrium we're looking down into the left ventricle and you've got those whitish colored valve flaps there as well and that's your bicuspid valve also known as your um, mitral valve over on that side of the heart and so visible body will actually let you highlight the the three cusps or leaflets of those valves separately so they all have their names but we're not going to learn the names of the individual leaflets same thing over here you've got two leaflets that I'm highlighting there on those valve flaps all right so you need to be able to identify those valves and then off of your anatomy study guide or, uh, or I'm sorry the list of the anatomical parts on your chapter 18 study guide um, some other things you've got there I'm highlighting there in blue and I'm going to multi-select I'm going to highlight in blue over here as well those are the chordae tendinii or uh, sometimes called the heart strings because um, they pull on those valve flaps to close them when they need to close and then let me zoom in let me deselect those let me zoom in down in here move my heart upward there all right if I keep zooming in keep zooming in all right do you see that right there you've got these two bumpy looking structures there and you've got one over here and that's on the right hand side of the heart and if we go over here into the left hand side of the heart here the left ventricle got a couple of things that look like mountains there and right over there all right so all of those are your papillary muscles that's a term on your study guide as well and so what happens when the left ventricle and the right ventricle contract and they do that at the same time those papillary muscles contract as well the muscle fibers that are in there are contracting more or less like what you guys learned when you studied skeletal muscles in biology 201 as they do that they pull on the core de tendinii on each side of the heart and that pulls those valve flaps closed these guys close so as your ventricles let me zoom out as your ventricles are contracting and generating a lot of pressure a lot of force squeezing the blood these valves close and that prevents blood from backflowing we would not want the blood to be going this way back into the atria okay so it prevents it from doing that instead where's the blood going to go I'm going to deselect all of that instead what happens is that forces the blood from the right ventricle over here it's going to head up this way towards this is your pulmonary trunk we're seeing the base of the pulmonary trunk there it's been cut off that blood is going to flow this way up into the pulmonary trunk and right here right here and right here those are the cusps of what we call the pulmonary valve or the pulmonary semilunar valve and the reason it's called a semilunar valve is because those valve cusps have I'm going to change pen colors here those if you look at it from the side they're like little cups and they literally are if you ever get to dissect a real heart they have a cup like shape and um because of that they're called semilunar like a half moon that's what semilunar means and uh the semilunar valves or slvs exist on the left and the right hand side of the heart so the one on the left hand side of the heart is going to have that type of shape as well so as the right ventricle over here is contracting it forces the blood up towards the pulmonary trunk that pushes those valve cusps open and now the blood is going to flow up here into the pulmonary trunk from the right hand side of the heart all right now over here on the left hand side similar type thing going on here's your left ventricle over here um, as the left ventricle is contracting left and the right ventricles contract at the same time together papillary muscles pull on these cusps that pull on the chordae tendinii which pull on the cusps of your AV valves to keep those closed and if we rotate around over here 
the blood over here in the left hand side of the heart gets forced up against the um, semilunar valve over on the left hand side of the heart that's going to be called our aortic semilunar valve and the blood flows up in there up in, from there up into the aorta okay so what keeps the blood from flowing backwards let me come back out and let me change my view here okay so blood is flowing from the left hand side of the heart up here into the aorta from the right hand side of the heart it's flowing up into the pulmonary trunk now once it gets up in here you got blood up in here and you have blood in the aorta over here your left ventricle and your right ventricle obviously they don't stay compressed contracting as they relax what's going to prevent the blood from flowing backwards this way back from the aorta and the pulmonary trunk into the left and the right ventricle we don't want that to happen well that's where that semilunar valve shape comes into play because they're cup shaped like that as the pressure goes down in your ventricles down in here and blood starts to want to flow backwards by gravity it flows up against the curved shape of those cusps and that causes those valves to close so your SLVs will close okay so again just a review here on visible body the things that we've taken a look at um, just as a reminder again the openings between the uh, atria and the ventricles are called atrioventricular orifices and you have those on the left and the right hand side of the heart you have your AV valves your atrioventricular valves on the left and the right hand sides and on the right side of the heart that is called the tricuspid valve on the left side of the heart that is called the bicuspid valve or the mitral valve either of those two names is fine um, the valve cusps or the flaps for your AV valves are connected to um, connective tissue strings called chordae tendinii and those in turn are connected down in here to papillary muscles maybe you guys remember from studying the skin in biology 201 you have those dermal papillae they kind of have that bumpy shape where they press up into the epidermis so things that kind of have a hill like structure like that um, are sometimes called papillae or that's a papillary type structure that's where those muscles get their names all right and so again as the left and the right ventricles are contracting these papillary muscles contract they pull on the chordae tendinii which closes those valves okay, and that prevents backflow of blood from the ventricles into the atria okay as your right ventricle and left ventricle are contracting uh, the blood gets squeezed upward from the right hand side of the heart up against this is your pulmonic or pulmonary semilunar valve either of those terms is fine and so that blood's going to get forced up into the pulmonary trunk so it will go to the lungs and over here on the left hand side of the heart if we look up in there as the left ventricle is contracting it forces blood up against the aortic semilunar valve and that blood flows up here into the aorta and that's our oxygenated blood that's going to be distributed all throughout the body to all body systems all right let me pause again I'm going to return to the PowerPoint all right most of the rest of our PowerPoint here is um, what I've got on here are just some diagrams from your textbook which you need to read through and review and make sure you understand this one-way flow of blood uh, through the heart you know from the atria to the ventricles to the the big blood vessels your pulmonary trunk and your aorta and uh, so this diagram is just walking you through what I just demonstrated to you over on visible body and then here is some written out information for you about those semilunar valves the aortic and pulmonary some people say pulmonic instead of pulmonary and that's fine as well and um, 
again, the idea there is to prevent backflow of blood from the pulmonary trunk or the aorta into those ventricles when you have those pressure changes occurring. This is a pretty good picture from your textbook because it's showing you here's the blood being forced upward uh, past a semilunar valve. That's what those little um, valve cusps are shaped like. They literally do look like cups. And when the ventricles relax, you can see how the blood and the aorta and the pulmonary trunk starts to flow backwards due to gravity, but it gets caught in those semilunar valve cusps, and that's what prevents the blood from leaking back into the uh, ventricles. All right, how about some homeostatic imbalances? You've probably heard of somebody before having problems with a uh, heart valve function. So you could have incompetent valves, which means the valves aren't working. So blood is backflowing um, through the heart, <clears throat> like from the pulmonary trunk and or the aorta back into the ventricles. And uh, of course, that's going to weaken your heart function. Your heart's not going to be able to oxygenate blood properly and or distribute oxygenated blood throughout the body. If the blood keeps falling back into one or both of the ventricles, the heart just keeps repumping blood over and over again. Um, and then, you know, as we age or sometimes due to infections, uh, people can develop valvular stenosis. So those valves, if you ever actually feel them in a real heart, um, you know, they've got a very flexible consistency, um, as you might imagine, because they've got to open and close a lot. Valvular stenosis, the tissues in there can become too dense and too fibrous. And that can occur like after an infection. Sometimes people wind up with heart valve uh, infections. And um, when the immune system comes in and tries to attack the bacteria and get rid of them, that can damage the heart valve tissues. And sometimes those heart valves, which are nice and kind of gooey and flexible, become um, overly fibrous and tough so they lose some of their flexibility that's called valvular stenosis the uh, flaps are now stiff and they don't function properly that way and that might cause the heart to have to generate more force to force that blood to pump the blood out of the heart and to the places where it needs to go and that can lead to you know somebody having to have valves replaced i'm sure you've heard of people having heart valves replaced before and there are mechanical valves that can be used um, in some cases pig valves are used and in other cases they may use donated valves from a cadaver um, during surgery when somebody needs a valve replacement all right so that concludes this particular lecture on the next video lecture we're going to review again some of the uh, pathway of blood through the heart